lasers. They make everything better, right? From Bond films to nightclubs to your actual eyes. But wait, how does that laser eye surgery actually work? Aren't we told we're supposed to avoid looking directly at bright lights? Well, it helps to know a little bit more about how lasers work first. Think about the grill bars on your oven or the heating elements on your toaster. As they heat up, the atoms inside get more energy and some of that energy is released in the form of orangey red light. Lasers operate on a similar principle. A particular material is given enough energy so that it releases light, but not just any light, light of only one colour. Laser is actually an acronym that describes this process. Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. The first lasers actually produced that iconic red light by the stimulated emission of light from rubies. Nowadays we kind of get rid of the gemstones and use gases, liquids, plasmas and a few other solids. So why does this light behave in such a straightforward manner? Shine a bog standard flashlight on the wall and light spills out all over the place. But shine your everyday laser beam onto a wall a kilometre away and it might only spread about a metre. Well that focused behaviour or coherency as it's known in the trade is because of the stimulated emission bit of that acronym. There is some cunning science that ensures that all the light waves are being emitted and waving at the same time. Plus the light is collimated. They're travelling in one direction and parallel to each other so that they can be concentrated on one area. This lack of spill gives lasers one of their lovely properties. You can use them to measure distances very accurately by seeing how long it takes the light to reflect back and how much light actually comes back. It's essentially the same principle for how lasers read CDs, if you remember them, which I do. Does that make me old? Anyway, CDs contain billions of microscopic pits in tracks along the underside of the disc. If you shine a laser at that pattern, it will either bounce off earlier from the normal surface or later from a pit. And treat these changes in the reflected light as either a one or a zero and you've got yourself a binary reading which can spell out a letter or essentially code a sound. That coherent collimated light also gives lasers another property. They can heat stuff up, i.e. burn through things. But why on earth would you want to have all that burny heat near your eyeballs? Well, First up, eye surgery actually uses what's known as an excimer laser, which is an ultraviolet cool laser that doesn't heat up the surrounding air, but will be absorbed by the surfaces it contacts, vaporising them. Sorry, that's probably not helping, is it? Um, the excimer is great because it actually only penetrates a microscopic amount, less than a nanometer, and it's massively precise. In fact, you can focus a beam as tight as a quarter of a micron, which is 200 times thinner than a human head. Hair. Okay, back to the making you see better bit. What do you actually focus the laser on to fix your vision? Well, both short and long sightedness, as well as some blurred vision, come about because your cornea, that's the transparent layer covering the front of your eye, is not the right shape. As well as protecting your eye, your cornea also acts as the first lens, working with your actual lens to focus the incoming light onto your retina. The cornea actually contributes over 65% of the focusing power of your eye. So if your cornea isn't the right shape, it's going to muck up what you see. The most common form of laser eye surgery involves numbing eye drops. Then you use a laser, or just a surgical instrument, to cut a small protective flap in the cornea. Then they use another laser to reshape the exposed surface underneath and then replace the flap. And because science loves an acronym, it's also known as LASIK or laser assisted in situ keratomalusis-ish. There are also versions that work on the surface directly or remove a thin layer and work underneath it. But because everything is numb, there's no pain and the whole thing is over in around half an hour. The grossest part, if all that wasn't gross enough, some people say they can actually smell their cornea being lasered. Smells like burning hair, apparently. Medical science, wonderful, weird, and now, literally up in your face. Modern medicine blows me away. Before vaccination, viruses like smallpox or polio would often lead to death. Before antiseptics, common infectious diseases meant that anything from a cut finger to giving birth could often lead to death. Before